What? Oh, I want to hear this. Me too. Count me in. Good idea! Let's do that! Paimon never would have guessed that Ushi was so gentle and thoughtful. Never judge a bull by its cover, huh? Ah, <sighs> sometimes the profoundest truths can also be the simplest. I think Ushi's words may well come in handy. You betcha! Just leave it to us! All right, Ito, Shinobu, Ushi, let's go. Oh, yeah! Grub time! <coughs> See you next time. <sighs> Finished taking care of business? Oh, there wasn't any business. We were just saying goodbye to our friends. <laughs> You're still here. I saw the two Inazumans leave with Yenfei, heading towards Liyue Harbor. Aren't you going with them? We still had some stuff we wanted to say to Xiao. Hmm. I figured as much. I've checked the area. Nothing strikes me as out of the ordinary. Looks like this chapter has come to a close. Now, I just need to take care of the confidentiality issues. <laughs> Let's hope our friends from overseas can keep their mouths shut. For their own sakes. Uh, we got it! We got it! We'll make sure they don't say anything! Please don't hurt them. Oh... You figured me out, huh? <laughs> All right, I'll quit pulling your leg. Everyone really rose to the occasion this time. I won't ever forget what we went through. Where could that strange space have come from? And how has it existed down there undetected for so many years? I have to investigate this further. I have a feeling that whatever lies behind all this runs deep. Maybe so deep that no one can be allowed to know. Also, I think someone helped us out at the last minute. They did a good deed, of course, but... Somehow I couldn't tell anything about them. It must have been someone of great importance. <sighs> anyway, these questions will have to wait for another time. I have some follow-up work to do and reports to make. So it's back to Liyue Harbor for me. See you when I see you. You knew I was waiting for you? Really? Hmm. <laughs> There's somewhere I want to go. If you have the time, you can join me. Where is it? A place that has to do with the Yakshas. The temple up ahead was built to remember Pervases. Maybe I came here because I had a realization. You mean, back when we were underground? It's hard to put into words. 
Seeing Bosatius gave me the false impression that I'd traveled back into the past. You could dress up the Yaksha's life and call us valiant warriors, veterans of war. But the truth is, we are slaughterers and nothing more. For Bosatius, perhaps dying in the heat of a great battle was no tragedy. And perhaps the same is true for me. After living so long, to die in the act of saving others would not have been a terrible thing. Hmm. So maybe... These thoughts are my own form of insanity. Hey, don't say that. Oh yeah! Ushi wanted us to tell you! It's very important. Hmm? Ushi said he has the power to exercise demons, so people use him to fend them off. But after he met Ito, he's never left his side. He also said that he doesn't have any grand philosophies. He just thinks we should spend our lives around the people who make us happiest. Maybe there aren't so many rules about how we should or should- Yep, like people with visions. They have more resistance against your power, right? And... and... Well, anyway, there's loads of people out there who really care about you. Huh. <sighs> Suddenly you sound a lot like Bosatius and the others. They used to talk about how they hoped to live a mortal's life once the world was at peace. I think... I was the only one who didn't think that way. The Bosatius recorded in the Fantastic Compass had lost his sanity. He addressed the people around him as Alatus, Minogius, and others. These are the names of the five Yakshas. I am Alatus, and Minogius is General Capesis. The others are Bonanus, or General Chizapis, and Indarius, or General Musatis. I heard that people call the five of us Yakshas, the Guardian Adepti. <laughs> Bosatius and Yelon's ancestors stayed underground to the end. So that space must have read their minds in their last moments as they approached death. Yelon was right in everything she said. Both of our proposals had their drawbacks, and both were sensible suggestions. But the power of that space was far beyond all of us. I couldn't have done all I did without everyone's help. Even in the final moments, it took every bit of my power to break free from that place. Well, Paimon still thinks you were amazing. Yenfei and Yelon are correct. I always prepare for the worst-case scenario. This mindset is deeply rooted in me. Even so, it was the most optimistic solution I could think of. If Rex Lapis hadn't saved me in that moment, I don't think I would have been- In the end, I still had to burden another. But that's how it should be, right? You've known Zhang Li, uh, Rex Lapis, for such a long time. And you've helped him before, so he helped you back. What's the big deal? Perhaps. In the moment that we escaped from that space, I could sense what was left of Bosatius's memory. If I had to say what I gained from this trip, I think that would be it. It's good that one more person will remember him. Nogius, where have you been? <sighs> Brother Yakshai, you're confused again. I've told you countless times, I am Boyang, a thaumaturge who fought with you in the chasm. Boyang? Boyang? You are Boyang, but who am I? <laughs> Believe me, I want to know as much as you do. Here we are, the two who agreed to stay here together, and I can't even call you by your name. It's a shame. Stay here? No. 
No, you have to leave. Uh, nonsense, Brother Yaksha. We're down here for good now. Don't you remember? It's too late to have regrets. The seal can't be broken. The seal... Oh, yes. I'm a Yaksha who came here to fight. Brother, brother, are you okay? <laughs> Look at the state of me. I don't think I've got long now. <laughs> We're the only two left. Don't go dying on me. <sighs> you know, today I saw my family down here. Clearest day. What do you think? Am I losing my mind now, too? Hmm. Boyong, do you want to go home? I made my decision to leave Zhong Zhao up on the surface. I obviously... <sighs> of course I want to go home. I must have... family, too. You mean brothers and sisters? I'm sure you do. Brothers and sisters... Yes, but who am I? And where is my family? I'm... Brother! What's wrong? Hang in there. It's just you and me, don't... Don't die before me. Alatus, is that you? Who's Alatus? Your memory's calling again. <coughs> I'm sorry. You all have to see me in this state. Brother! Brother! Look, there's someone over there. Who are they? They're... They're my... My... Remember now, I know you. <laughs> My brothers and sisters have come for me, Boy Young. You're, you're awake. At least, at least tell me your name. Brother, brother Bosatius. <laughs> hey, Bosatius. <laughs> Bosatius. I... I am Bosatius, and my destiny is to make the ultimate sacrifice. I've said so much today, but I don't need to hold back as much when I talk to you. Have you ever had a moment where you felt like you were aware of your destiny? The potential of life, the approach of death, whatever it might have been. By now, I have accepted that destiny is the one disaster that the Yaksha know most keenly of all. We are destined to misery, and yet we have no fear. Xiao? It matters not. Rex Lapis had said that you are a witness. It is right that the events of the world are relayed to you. Bonanis, Minogius, and Indarius all perished, and only Bosatius's fate was unknown. This has always stung my heart like a thorn. That is why I went to the chasm, despite being fully aware of the danger. Now that I know what happened in the chasm back then, I can finally put this matter to rest. Before we left that place, I picked up a stone. I thought if I could take it out with me, I would place it in the temple to Pervases in memory of Bosatius. Unfortunately, the stone did not survive. Pervases died in the Archon War thousands of years ago. He was younger than us. And Bosatius was very sad when he passed. Too many Yakshas have become casualties of battle. We are like a flock of birds scattered to the four corners of the world. And in the end, as Bonanis said, it's rare for a Yaksha to find repose for their soul. Bosatius, Boyang, and all those soldiers. 
heroes. I like that word. Maybe the world will never be free of disaster. But there is good in the world, too. Even the darkest hearts have room for those they cherish. I accept your advice. From this day on, heroes will always look out for each other. Astra Avisosk. We meet again, you two. Hi, Catherine. Do you have any commissions for us today? Commissions, huh? Hmm. Let me think. Oh, how about this? Please attend the Academia's Academic Symposium this afternoon and recite a love poem on stage. Uh, wait. Say what now? And if possible, Please also use your camera to capture the reaction of the audience upon finishing the poem. Huh? What kind of commission is that? I see. It appears that you're not interested in this commission. In that case, please go to Port Armos and convince the Eremites there to spend some time volunteering at the local orphanage. Hey! Any better? Mm hmm. I'm sure the mercenaries will have some interesting reactions as well. Gotta ask, just who exactly has been submitting these commissions to the Adventurers Guild? Oh, the commissioner? Hmm, well, actually, I just wanted to see the two of you in action.
<laughs> Unless it's so obvious. I was hoping you would actually take one of those commissions. That kind of chance to observe humans doesn't come by often. Ah, so it's Nahida. Paima just knew Catherine wouldn't crack those kinds of jokes. When did you get into her head? <sighs> From when she said... Ad Astra Adasosk? So it's been you this whole time? <sighs> Are you done resting up, Nahida? Yes. I've been sleeping ever since we parted ways. And I even had a really, really long dream. It was another dream about the Subzerus Festival. Except it was a happy one. In my dream, I was sitting in the middle of a flower terrace. And everyone in Sumeria City was holding hands as they danced in circles around me. They danced round and round, and everyone looked really happy. I also got to sit on a gigantic flower carriage. Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, raised me really, really high above the ground. And I was throwing an endless amount of Yalda candies at the children. You know, Nahida, maybe your dream is how the Subzerus Festival really should be. It's meant to be a joyous time where everyone gets together to celebrate your birthday. Huh? Wasn't I describing a really happy dream? Why are you both looking at me like that? Wait... Could this be an example of the emotion known as pity? No, no! We are pitying you! That would only make everything worse. We just don't want you to feel too sad. By the way, have you had a chance to visit Dunyarzad? How's she doing? The Homiyanis haven't allowed any visitors after the festival, so we haven't been able to check on her. Yes, I paid her a visit right after I woke up. She was resting at the time. Her condition is stabilized. However, since Elazar is a manifestation of the withering on the human body, we can only cure it by finding a way to take care of Ermansalt's own withering. But for the moment, our top focus should still be figuring out what the sages are up to and what they're planning. Right. Who knows what'll happen if they manage to pull off another scheme like the Samsara of the Subzerus Festival. So our first priority should be investigating and putting a stop to the sages' activities. As for how we should pull that off, let's discuss it somewhere else. There are too many adventurers around here. Oh, good point. Uh, sorry, adventurers. We're gonna be borrowing Catherine for a little while. Let's continue our chat here. Okay, so do you have any ideas on how we can investigate the sages, Nahida? Actually, I've already done a little bit of work on that. But for now, I want to hear your thoughts. I've already tried that. But all the key members of the Academia, even the core of 30 guards, intentionally avoid wearing their Akasha terminals. It seems that from the very beginning, they've been guarding against info leaks from the Akasha. Of course, it could also be because they're weary of me. Have you already caught the Sage's attention? I'm guessing not yet. But this trusting me would make perfect sense if they've ever paid attention to the urban legends about me. In any case, I probably can't take over their minds directly. No way, that's too risky. You mean, it'd be too easy to get caught? No, it's not that. We shouldn't involve innocent students in this. 
a single mistake could completely ruin their lives. Doing that would be ignoring the safety of my people for my own selfish goals. How is that any different from what the sages are doing? That's a good point. Spoken like the god of Temeru! We're in the dark as of now. Since we still don't know anything about their goals, any rash move could tip them off and lead to terrible consequences. After all, every person in Sumeru City is one of their hostages. Hmm... Are we really out of ideas? Nahida, you're super smart, so you already have something in mind, right? Don't keep us in suspense, spill the beans already! According to a popular theory from the Vahumana Darshan of the Academia, rejecting impractical motions at the beginning of a planning session will give more weight to the actual proposal. Okay, okay, but aren't you the god of wisdom? You don't have to use that kind of gimmick to make us take your ideas seriously. Well, I've been thinking that if I can't directly possess the leaders, and if I can't get ordinary people involved, then I should find someone who's already involved, but hasn't decided to side with the sages. You're saying we should recruit a spy? Hmm... That does sound like it could work. Oh, before coming back, we met someone named Alhatham. He seems like he acts alone, and he likes doing stuff behind the Academia's back. They probably aren't in cahoots. Actually, I already have someone in mind. Do you still remember that female scholar named Sataria? Sataria? Paima remembers now! Isn't she the one who's always trailing behind the Grand Sage of the Academia? We ran into her basically every time the sub Festival repeated itself. You could even say we're old enemies by now. Paimon still remembers the smug and mean way she always spoke to Nilu. Mm-hmm. I've always liked observing all kinds of people, and Sitaria has always stood out from the crowd. She was born in the desert, and was hailed as their greatest genius. Her academic gifts allowed her special admission into the Academia, and also gave her the opportunity to serve as the Sage's assistant. Oh, Paimon didn't know she was from the desert. She must be pretty special then. Paimon feels like most of the desert dwellers around the city are working as mercenaries. The name Sitaria means star. When she lived in the desert, she shone like the brightest star in the night sky. Later on, she was chosen by the sun. The star was given a place in the daytime sky to complement the sun's dazzling light. Soon after, the star witnessed the sun scorching the earth, which brought forth many disasters. The star began to waver. Instead of staying beside such a sun, wouldn't it be better to return and light a part of the night sky? But in the end, she couldn't give up the radiance of daytime. To cope with her shame, the star buried her guilt and closed her eyes. From the sound of it, Satari has just hung up on the research opportunities here. But she doesn't really support the Academia. She still feels guilty about not doing more for the desert, right? She's just running away from her problems. Indeed. When they are presented with complex moral issues, many people will simply plug their ears and go with the flow until the problem can't be fixed anymore. She's suppressing a lot of guilt, but before she realized it, she had already become the Sage's accomplice. She can't deny her part in their schemes anymore.
Right. We must somehow make her face her problems again. That way, not only can we get useful intel from her, but she can also use it as an opportunity to redeem herself. From my past observations, Vitaria will take a day off from the Academia every 10 days to do some shopping in the city. Tomorrow afternoon just happens to be a shopping day for her. That'll be our chance. To prepare, let's go check out some of her favorite spots and have a quick chat with a few of the vendors there. should be Sataria's favorite fortune-telling spot. Uh, so should we ask the fortune-teller about Sataria? No, I already have enough information on Sataria. The most important thing now is for you to pay attention to the vendor's talking style and key characteristics. Talking style and key characteristics? My poor lost lands. Have you become troubled over your fates? The divine voice of wisdom often echoes between mine ears. If thou be blessed today by the gods, I may be able to show you the way. Huh? Really? Nahida, you've been whispering things to her? Shh! <clears throat> My friend here has some doubts regarding his future. Can we get a fortune reading for him? Hmm... <laughs> of course, of course. In that case... <laughs> uh -huh. It would seem that Harut and Marut are quite wary of you. Perhaps, at some time in the past, you have somehow offended the gods. Hmm... Only mocking the god of Animo, questioning the lord of Geo's financial savviness, and brawling with the god of Electro. Do those count? Hmm? Oh, nothing. Go on, pick an aspect for her to divine. Prospects. No problem at all. Um... <laughs> the gods have spoken. The truth shall be revealed. Your life shall continue on for... For... Huh? Many... Many tens of thousands of years? Impossible. Harut! Marut! Did you two spoil my divination? I've never read a fortune so absurd. Uh, actually, Paimon thinks this is probably the most accurate fortune telling you've ever done. <clears throat> I admit that the orientation of today's celestial matrix is, uh, suboptimal. As such, there will be no charge. Is that so? Well, that can't be helped. If you were to bring some food offerings for Harut and Marut on your next visit, perhaps they could help you reverse the wheels of fate.
of Sataria's favorite stalls? Yep. It belongs to a king. His father helped Sataria a lot when she first moved to Samari City, so she still comes by whenever she has time. When I start talking with him, listen carefully to the details of our conversation. Ah, dear customers! Would you like to look at some pottery? We caught wind of your great craftsmanship, so we specifically came to take a look. Oh, I recognize you. Aren't you Miss Catherine from the Adventurer's Guild? <laughs> Sounds like I'm in for some big business. Speaking of, where did you learn this trade? I suppose you could say it all started with my dad. He's a mason by trade, but I picked up an interest in clay while apprenticing for him. After that, I began making pottery by myself in secret. And I simply changed trades when my works turned out well. Although it's a pity that I'm no longer making much use of the knowledge provided to me by the Akasha. That's nice! You're making a living doing something you love! Hmm... So is your father still working as a mason? Oh no, not anymore. A few years back, he fell from a roof and broke his leg. Since he had already saved enough Mora over all these years, he's just enjoying the retired life in Port Ormos nowadays. I see. We wish him peace and happiness in his retirement. I'll have someone in charge of logistics at the guild come by another day for some goods. We'll leave you to it. Take care now. No problem. Rest easy, all our goods are sure to meet your every need. This should be our final stop. Sitaria is always thinking of this restaurant when she's working at the Academia. So she always comes by whenever she's out in the city. Nahida, you've really thought of everything! <laughs> it's my duty to protect Samiri citizens, after all. Hi there. I feel like I've seen you down by the docks before. Huh? Sorry, I don't quite remember. If I recall, you were having a discussion with someone about shipbuilding at the time. Ah, oh, that's right! I've always been really interested in feats of marine engineering. After all, I grew up in Liyue Harbor and spent my entire childhood staring at the ships going in and out of the port. I came to Sumeru to study, but failed to make it into the Academia due to my lack of talent. But... I'm still discussing all kinds of problems with different scholars. And I'm continuing to study and perform research from the restaurant's basement. I'm sure I'll get to the Academia after their next round of exams. What an admirable spirit for learning! Amazing! Uh... Sure... But you'll find hardworking people wherever you go. So this restaurant has a basement as well? Huh. First I've heard of it. That's right. It's not usually open to patrons. Most of the time, employees use it for breaks or to hold private events. I see. Yes, that makes sense. Well, good luck with your studies, Miss Chishan. <laughs> Thank you so much. As long as I can make it into the academia as an official student, I'll be happy.
familiar faces should be enough for Sataria. Uh, what's the point of all the information we've collected? Nahida, you still haven't told us how you're planning to make Sataria face her problems. Sataria is already used to avoiding her problems, so we must find a way to break through her usual sensibilities. I remember you mentioned that the Eremites in Port Ormos are all making a fuss about the upcoming resurrection of King Deshret. Although it's all just a boatload of nonsense, the faith of her homeland may turn out to be Sataria's soft spot. Oh, Paima gets it now! You want to take advantage of the guilt Sataria feels about her homeland! Although she knows she should return home to help the people of the desert, all she's done is conspire with the sages! So, how do we set that up? Well, King Deshret is long gone. And Sitaria is also too smart to fall for any simple tricks. If we simply engaged her under the guise of King Deshret's believers, she would definitely be weary of us, and we may not get anywhere. But, if we were to borrow some of her close acquaintances to talk with her, her reaction would probably be very different. So, you mean you're going to possess those people we just talked to? Yep. Possess them through the Akasha. Imply they've already converted to the faith of King Deshret, and then convey our made-up will of King Deshret. As long as everything goes smoothly, we'll get through to Sataria for sure. She'll never guess that we had anything to do with it. All the info we collected on these people. It's so that you won't slip up and break form. Possessing them will only work if you can manage to pass off as them. Exactly. So, best of luck with impersonating them. Huh? Best of luck? But we don't know how to possess anyone. That's no problem at all. I'll just share all their senses with you once I've possessed them. As long as you're also wearing an Akasha terminal, the effect will basically be as if you've possessed them yourself. Huh. That is pretty convenient. But why does he have to do this? Can't you do it yourself? Although I've been observing humans for a while, I've never been good at imitating them. Hmm. You're not wrong. It's always been painfully obvious whenever you try to pass as Catherine. If it was at all possible, I would have preferred to leave these people alone. But seeing how things are now, I probably should just accept it and push on. Yeah, don't beat yourself up over it. We're only doing this to help everyone, and we'll only be borrowing them for a little while anyway. Alright, then let's give it a go tomorrow afternoon.
Here she comes! Satari is here! Let's quietly follow her. Once she starts talking to her acquaintances, we'll find a safe spot to begin possessing them. As for how we'll sway her to our side, I'll leave that to you. I trust you'll know what to say. Uh, Paimon's starting to feel kinda nervous. Okay, let's go. Looks like they've already started talking. Let's find a hiding spot and get started. Right, you really can't force anything when it comes to love. And besides, everyone around me has a very different background and outlook. Uh, are you still listening to me, Nabia? Oh, of course I'm listening. You were talking about troubles with your love life, right? I heard everything you said. <sighs> okay then, you just seemed a little distracted for a moment there. Strange. Your cats seem pretty worked up. Is something wrong? I always thought they were quiet, happy kitties. Oh, what are their names again? That's right. They are just little darlings, aren't they? Harut and Marut. Ahem. <clears throat> so, which fortune do you want me to read for you today? You must have come for another echo of the divine voice of wisdom. Hmm. I'd like to get another reading on my love prospects, but to be perfectly honest with you, I feel like I've been a real mess recently. A mess? Well, um, could you do a reading on how long it'll take me to finish my current project at work? I really just want to get it over with. I hear you. No problem at all. Uh, the gods will reveal the truth. Um... The gods are asking... Sitaria! Why haven't you gone home? Why haven't I gone... home? Do the gods really know everything I've been thinking about? Sitaria, why don't you just go home? It's a demand now instead of a question. Oh, the gods seem to be truly upset. 
Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I know I failed the gods. Please pass on my most sincere apologies and ask for their divine forgiveness. And, if I may ask, Nabia, is there a specific god who's speaking to you right now? Considerate and naive question. The god who is speaking to me is, of course, the wisest and mightiest of all, King Deshret. Uh, King Deshret? No wonder he would make such a demand of me. Uh huh. Wait a second. King Deshret passed away a long time ago. Even though news of King Deshret's resurrection has been spreading like wildfire, it's all just a misinformation campaign from the academia. How can King Deshret still exist in real life? What insolence! I am King Deshret's most loyal believer. Do you wish to refute his voice of wisdom? Oh, no, no. As a child of the desert, I am only reveling in his power upon learning that his divine glory has touched even this city. <sighs> I will think very carefully about his demand of me. I'm sorry. I must go now. ran off in a hurry. She looked pretty upset, too. Well done. Sitaria didn't seem to suspect anything amiss. To have something she's been trying desperately to avoid show up out of nowhere and berate her, that must have shaken her to the core. Aw, Nahida. It seems like you understand human emotions really well after all. All I know are some abstract Haraba taught theories. In any case, my time with you has shown a lot of them to be utterly useless. I'm still trying to make sense of everything. Anyway, enough of that. Let's hurry and catch up to Sataria. He's out of games now. Right on cue. Let's get ready to possess him right away! It's okay. I just got caught up in something. Oh, actually, didn't you ask me to help you look for work? What kind of work were you looking for again? Oh, right. Your old man's craft. How could I forget? Speaking of, how's he doing? Is he feeling any better? Oh, that's good to hear. I have been thinking a lot about him. If I could get some more time off, I'd love to pay him a visit. Actually, while we're talking about him, is he still living in Port Ormos? Yeah, he's been retired there for a while. If you could find the time, please write him a letter. Let him know that recently, faith in King Deshret has taken root in Port Ormos and has begun to spread across Sumeru. He has a quick temper, and has always been a devout follower of the Dendro Archon. I don't want him to get into a fight with those King Deshret believers because of a difference in beliefs. Oh? So, who are you siding with in all of this? The Academia, or King Deshret? Uh... I... <sighs> I'm so jealous of you. You were born a child of the desert, yet you chose to betray King Deshret, and now you spend all your time with those crooks from the Academia. Akim, you don't mean... you've also become a believer of King Deshret? What's so strange about becoming a believer of the wise King Deshret? In fact, aren't you the strange one? The one who still can't pick a side? C can't pick a side? Me? Whoa! Paimon had no idea you'd be so good at this! You really? 
really zeroed in on the issue and put it right in front of her. It might feel a bit overwhelming for Sataria. But once everything is over, I'll be sure to pay her a visit to her mind and explain everything. Anyway, let's keep going. Come on! Sataria's already started talking with Shishan! So, Shishan, have you noticed anything weird in the city lately? Like, as if someone was trying to preach to you about something? Oh, right. Speaking of strange things, I celebrated the Subzerus Festival so many times that I lost count. That was really weird. Wait, how could you be aware of that? That should be impossible. Nothing in the report indicated anything like that. Are you still failing to realize that the Academia's lowly tricks could never deceive all of Sumeru's citizens? Shishan, uh, uh, don't tell me that you've converted to King Deshret as well! What an absurd question. You make it sound like I should be ashamed for becoming a believer of King Deshret. In reality, shouldn't you be the one who is ashamed? You, who worked side by side with the Academia, and treated people as nothing more than experimental subjects? Please, please stop! Even now, Satari is still trying to run from her problems. She can no longer justify everything to herself. Hey, she's trying to talk to the guards! What should we do? This is the most important part of all. Quick, get ready. Mercenary, you're a member of the Corps of Thirty, correct? Please help me pass a message to the Matra right away. The situation in the city is getting out of control. Please, try to remain calm, miss. Tell me what's happening in the city. Heretics are infiltrating the city, and they've already converted many residents to their side. Heretics? What kind of heresy are you talking about? King Deshred! Many people I know have suddenly started believing in him, but he's long dead. It's impossible. Miss Sataria, nothing is impossible. <laughs> <laughs> 